Happy Holidays everybody, this is Loki Jen coming to you from Casa del Loki. Um, I'm going to be starting a new series here. And, uh, well, I thought what would be more fitting for the holiday season, also with the uh, medical cannabis community, than baking. Everyone loves to bake, or at least get baked, or eat baked goods. So, uh, I figured I would do uh, a little series on that. And uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the very basics. You, you're going to first need to have certain things um, pre-prepared before you start baking. And one of the first things that I like to do, and it's not necessary for all of it. Uh, some people do it, some people don't. Uh, especially if you're going to be baking, you're going to be getting it up to the high temperatures anyways. But for me, I like to be thorough. And this process is called decomboxylation. Um, basically, we're just we're going to dry it out and get that oxygen molecule to detach from the alkaloids and uh, make them a little more orally active. That way, our uh, digestive system doesn't uh, tear it all up and 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 not give us the effects we're looking for. So, as you guys can see, today I have. Uh, the oven set at 200. Uh, 220 would be okay, you just gotta stay on top of it. I find 200 Fahrenheit to be uh, sufficient. <clears throat> it gets the uh, plant material hot enough and uh, it, it does the trick. Also what I have there is uh, an ounce or 28 grams of bud. Now this bud I have destemmed and have broken apart to make the decomboxylation a little bit easier. Some people like to leave their flowers whole. It's perfectly fine, however, what, uh, which way you want to do it. Uh, it's entirely up to you. I personally like to take a little strainer and strain the material as I'm putting it on to the pan. That way uh, I can get out any, any little sticks and stuff that might have gotten in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys right now. What you want to do is you want to get a nice even spread. I found personally, this is a personal technique, you want to get a nice even spread across your baking sheet. Uh, that way it heats evenly. So I'm just going to lightly shake this through because like I said I've already broken up the buds. And I'm just catching any of the little stems that usually kind of go with uh, some of the, the, the sun leaves that were inside the buds that didn't get quite taken out. Um, you know, you, you always miss a couple here and there. This straining technique is a great way to catch those little bits and uh, you know, get them out of your product. Uh, you, you never know. We're going to be uh, making a few different things with this. so. Uh, we're going to be straining it out, but if, if there is a recipe that's going to call for you to use it, you know, as as an herb, uh, as as you know, the plant material itself. Personally, I think taking out those little sticks is a service to whomever's going to be consuming it, because I don't know if you've ever had an edible that someone kind of made, and there was one of these little guys in there and it sort of stuck you in the mouth or got between your teeth. That is no fun people. So with that said, I'll get rid of this, which are just little clumps of crap we don't really need. And uh, that probably knocks it down to about 27 grams, but you know, give or take it's okay. Uh, with edibles you're going to want to start slow anyways and work your way up until you find out the right dosage for yourself. Now I've already gone ahead and preheated the oven to 200 degrees Fahrenheit and this is going to take several minutes uh, to do but you're going to want to you're going to want to stay on top of it. You're going to really want to use your nose for this um, because your nose is going to tell you when your herb is ready. So let's go ahead and pop this in the oven and we'll come back in a couple minutes when she's nice and toasty, decomboxylated and ready to go. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add that ounce to some butter. We're going to infuse it in the butter and we're going to have a can of butter. So let's go ahead and give it a little bit of time 
and uh, we'll come back for the next step. Alright, uh, that didn't take very long. A few minutes and I'm already starting to smell the cannabis. Ooh, and she smells good. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off. I like to let it cool down in the oven, um, but I also pull it a little bit earlier than most people. Some people like to take it, you know, a full 10 minutes or so, maybe 15 minutes. Some people go a little longer. I find it's a little excessive. You start to um, get little hot spots. And that just, that happens, uh, I think, probably because, you know, it's just the way things heat up. I, I'm not exactly sure, but I like to give it about 10 minutes, sometimes 15 minutes if I'm dealing with a lot of cannabis. And then uh, I'll pull it just as I start to smell, you know, the cannabis. You know, you start to smell the aroma of the cannabis. It's very, very distinct, even for those of us that smoke every day. It's a very distinct smell. And then I like to let it kind of cool down in the oven itself to help, you know, further along any decomboxylation on any part of the plant material that uh, probably needed just another minute or two. So I'm going to go ahead and let that sucker cool down. And uh, while I do that, I'm going to get everything ready to make us some can of butter. Uh, the can of butter is going to take several hours to do. So make sure you have the time for it. And before you get started, make sure you have all the materials. And I'll go over that with you guys here in just a second. So why don't I go ahead and let this thing cool down. And while I do that, I'll prepare everything else for you guys. And we'll get right to it. All right, everybody. <clears throat> so I'll fill you in on what I've done here. I've taken about three cups of water. I've set it in my little pot here. I've got uh, the heat on, and I'm going to go ahead and bring this up to a boil. While I was heating the water, I took a half pound of butter, two sticks, and I have cut them up into sections so it's easier to melt into the water. Now, this ratio is debated upon, of course. This is my personal technique. It works for me. Some people say it's a little strong. Some people say it's not that strong. It depends. Um, if you're going to, if you're new to this, if you're a new patient, if you aren't uh, as familiar with cannabis, I would go ahead and double the amount of butter. Use a full pound of butter to 28 grams or one ounce of bud. Um, and in fact, if you're really new, I would cut the bud in half. So I would use 14 grams or a half ounce of bud to one pound of butter for new people. Um, but as you all know with me and the people that um, I deal with on a regular basis, we have a little higher tolerance and some of us need higher doses of cannab uh, cannabinoids in our system to help um, heal the body. So I uh, kind of reversed it. I, I doubled the amount of bud I'm going to use and cut the amount of butter in half. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to say, I'm going to turn this down, we're starting to get a little boil. Once we start to get a little bit of a, a boil going, I'm going to go ahead and add the butter that way. I don't get it too hot, scorch it, and get it to kind of flip over and <coughs> make a mess. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've had uh, people tell me before, you know, well, you're putting too much butter in the butter, you're wasting your bud. This may be true, um, but I also like to oversaturate everything so that I make sure that every bit of my butter is uh, medicated. Now, I can get away with this because I cultivate for myself. Um, my friends are cultivators. We all work together and uh, we keep each other happy. We keep each other healthy. So, I uh, I have a little extra to waste. I hate to say that, but it, it's true. So to get a you know full saturation, I really bombard whatever it is I'm trying to infuse with a lot of cannabis. That way, I would much rather have a little bit of the alkaloids remain in the plant material and water, and have. We'll say in this case the butter completely saturated, 
than to have all of it, the alkaloids out of the plant material and the butter will say a quarter saturated. For me, um, it's become a little easier for me to dose out um, by oversaturating it. So I found that this technique works for me. This is not um, this is not you know carved in stone. This is this is not something that that is um, you know irrefutable. This is a technique and everybody will develop their own techniques according to how their body reacts and what they like from their edibles and from their cannabis in general. So we're going to go ahead and let this butter melt and then I'm going to I'm going to let it simmer for a little bit. And as it's simmering, I'm going to go ahead and add our decomboxylated cannabis directly into the mixture of butter and oil or butter and water, I'm sorry. Um, that actually leads into what I was going to uh, say next. Now, butter, as you know, is, is a fat, like oil, and oil and water do not mix. Generally speaking, oil will float on top of water. Water will be below and oil will float on top. So, what I'm trying to do here in this process is I'm trying to heat it up enough to melt the butter into a liquid form so that it's kind of intermingling with the water. So when I add the cannabis, the heat from the water will cause the resin or the trichomes to soften and liquefy a little bit and break off and then it'll bond to the lipids in the butter. And then we'll strain it, pull out all the plant material, probably discard that unless someone wants to make a paste or a lotion or something out of it, you know. Some people use butter, some people use uh, coconut oil, some people use, you know, different types of shades and stuff like that. I'm probably going to toss it. But uh, after that's done, I'll let it cool. And then after it's filtered, it's cooled, I'll pop it in the refrigerator to re-solidify the butter. And it'll harden on top of the water. And, uh, and then we just remove it and uh, weigh it out. I like to weigh it out. I have a triple beam. Most uh, people in the cannabis culture is going to have a scale of some sort. So um, I'll weigh it out. Make sure I still got my half pound of butter because I'm going to need them for the recipe. And, and then we'll go from there. So until then, I'm going to go ahead and do this process for you guys so you're not sitting here watching this pot boil because that's oh so much fun as we know and I'll get back to you as soon as we get ready to add the cannabis alright you guys it's been a couple minutes here and as you can see we're starting to get a simmer boil I have already went ahead and turned the, the stove top down to about medium and I've got a nice little rapid boil going there. I don't know if you can see it but it's just barely bubbling. Keep it right about that boiling temperature. Now, we're going to go ahead and take our cannabis. Now, I like to put foil or um, parchment paper down. Uh, preferably, I like to use parchment paper over foil simply because you won't really lose trichomes onto the parchment paper. But really, you can use foil. It's not, you're not really going to lose it. it. The loss is so negligible, it's not even funny. I'm just a little OCD. But I like to take the paper or the foil and use it to kind of direct the cannabis into my pot. And I'm going to put that whole ounce in. I'm going to set this off to the side. And I'm going to turn this way down because what's going to happen is is once you add the, the uh, plant material it's going to have a little bit of something to hold the, the bubbles together and you might get as you see here a bubbling up so I've got it down to about one or two which is just above low on my stove and I'm going to want to add some oxygen to it by stirring into it um, while this is cooking it's generally a good idea to stir it often, if not continuously. Um, like I said, I'm a little OCD. I tend to like to stay here 
and, and just kind of turn it. Honestly, you know, for, for someone like myself who's disabled, who's home all day, this is kind of nice. It gives me something to do. I don't have to think about it, and it, it's kind of a fun little project. So, you know, I, I know there's a lot of homebodies out there. I talk to them all almost every day. And this is, this is something that's easy to do for us. Um, and, um, you know, it's great to pass the time. So as you can see, just by lightly stirring that, I'm adding a little bit of oxygen into the water, which helps to cool it down just enough, a couple degrees, to keep it from going overboard. And by stirring it also, I'm breaking up these bubbles that are forming on top to keep it from overflowing. We don't want that to happen. That makes a mess. We waste product. We waste everything. Time. It's no fun. So I'm going to go ahead and stir this and keep going. Now, what I like to do is I like to take my time with this part, with the infusion part. Um, like I said with the decomboxylation, there are time differences according to techniques and what people like. Some people like to leave it in the oven for a long time. Some people use a slow cooker for several hours to decomboxylate. Same with the, with the butter infusion. Some people say 10 minutes, some people say an hour. Um, it really is going to depend on you. I like to kind of split the difference a little bit. I'll shoot for 20 minutes, but if I feel like it's done, if I can see the infusion, you start to see the color change in the butter, the little froth on top. It's not so yellow, it becomes a little greener. You start to smell that herby smell again. Like any good cook or chef will know, using your nose, you, you can tell when it's ready, when it's infused. So, I say 20 minutes, but I might cut it to 10. I might cut it to 15. So, this is why I like to stay over the stove. I like to stay stirring it. And, uh, you know, stay on top of it. Because this is, this is a very crucial point when it comes to baking with medibles. Um, you want a proper infusion, you know. I talked about wasting a little bit of product in, in oversaturating the butter. Well, you know, we're already wasting that little bit. We don't want to waste what's in the pot. So, we want to get that infusion. We want to get a full saturation in the butter. So, I'm going to go ahead and spend 15 minutes maybe, maybe longer, maybe less, stirring that sucker. I'm going to save you guys the hassle and I'll get back to you when it's time to go to the next step. Alright everybody, the simmer is done. And what I did is I went ahead and took the pot off the stove and let it cool down a little bit. Not too much, I don't want um, the butter to solidify uh, in there yet, but the water will keep it nice and soft for now. What I did is I took a cloth, this is a, a, a clean cloth, it's just a uh, it's an old, um, you know, dining napkin. You can use cheesecloth, but what, when I grind my, my butt up, I grind it up pretty thin. So I like to use something that has a little finer of a netting to it. And it's just sitting in a strainer. And I got a glass bowl here. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour our mixture right into there and I'm going to separate out the plant material. So let's go ahead and do that. I like to scrape around the sides just to try and get everything we can. Like I said, you know, by oversaturating it, we're already wasting a little bit. So I like to get it all. I'm going to go ahead and let that drain a little bit while I set this off to the side. What I like about this technique and using a cloth is that you're going to get to a point when this start, you know, this little riblet kind of goes to just, you know, driplets, and uh, you're going to want to squeeze, and with this cloth, it's so big that you don't, you won't necessarily burn yourself, uh, you can, be very careful, of course, but uh, it gives you a little bit of room to play with, as you can see here, so as it's going, I'll shake it a little bit, 
and I want to get all of this liquid out. Now, I could just squeeze it, but like I said, it's hot without gloves. It can be kind of painful. So I'm going to shake it so I can get all of the liquid to converge together. And when we get to driplets, when this riblet starts just dripping, then I'll twist the cloth and squeeze out the rest of the butter. So, there we go. Nope, we're, we still got some riblets going. There. There's the driplets. So, I'll take it at the top where it's still kind of dry and just twist it. It's going to be a little warm, but that's why we took it off the stove a little bit early and let it cool down just a tad so that it was cool to the touch. Now, as you can see, what's coming out right now is just the butter. And that, my friends, is why we want to take the time to really kind of get this out of there. So this is a technique I, I kind of developed so that I don't burn myself because I tend to do that. I just twist it in the bottom of my strainer, get a nice tight ball, and push. And I'll keep doing that until all of it is gone. And once we get it all drained out, I can set aside this butter-infused plant material for something else. Those people that like to reuse stuff, um, making creams, lotions, that kind of stuff, there's still alkaloids in that. That can still be used. Um, but like I said earlier, generally I tend to toss this stuff. So, but I'm going to give it another squeeze here, just so that we can get everything we can out of it. We're going to give it a nice squeeze. All right. So I'm going to set this off to the side. I made a little bit of a mess. I'm going to clean this up, take my strainer out, and then I'm going to place my glass bowl in the refrigerator and that's going to take a few hours to set up and I'll get back to you guys as soon as that setup is ready to go alright everybody so I let this sit for several several hours you could probably let it sit all night if you wanted to um, but as you can see the butter whoop, has solidified and uh, just as simply as that, I guess, you break the butter away from the sides and the water underneath becomes loose. Some people like to pick these out. I use something a little more fancy. I like to take a strainer. So I'm going to go ahead and strain this off and we're going to recollect our butter. And then from that, we can make all our medibles. So I'm going to go ahead and just let that drain off. But as you can see, it's got this beautiful rich color to it. Um, there's still a little bit of the plant particulates that made it through the filter. Uh, even though I'm using a cloth filter, it does happen. Um, there are ways around that. It takes a little more time, extra steps. It really depends on the person and what they want to get. But generally this is what you're going to do to infuse your butter. I'm going to leave it in the strainer over the bowl like that. As you can see, it's going to drain off the rest of the water. Then I'll collect all the butter and I will put it into a dish to be used later. Um, that way it, I know I've got a half pound of butter there with an ounce of herb in it ready to rock and roll. So I'm going to place this whole setup in the fridge to keep the butter solid but still allow the water to drip off. That way we don't have a problem with the screen later. Okay? So I'm going to pop this in the fridge and then, uh, you know what, in the next video we're going to put this butter to use. We're going to make some really cool medibles. So, Loki Jen Casa del Loki, come on back.